This is a CBC Podcast. Well, some people say New Brunswick's white paper on municipal reform. Um, we've been talking a lot about this on the show. And uh, they've been saying that this is going to lead to some long overdue changes. You know, fewer towns and villages uh, and local service districts too, leading to a more efficient political structure, basically. Well, Monsef Lacquis sees a, a chance here to do something else. And that is to find, finally help newcomers feel at home. Um, one of the reforms in that paper is going to give them the right to vote in civic elections. Monsef Lacquis is president of the New Brunswick Multicultural Council. Good morning. Good morning. This is big, Monsef. This is huge and historic. You've been fighting for this for a long time. Like, maybe take us back to, to how you started advocating for this. Absolutely. Well, it, it, this goes to 2012 when I was part of a conversation that eventually was about granting permanent residents the right to vote at municipal elections. Uh, 2014, I decided to make this official by bringing this as a 21 inch project, as a community project. And I started a conversation, um, went to every every council that would listen to me. Uh, usually back, back then, it was myself and Tomar Rafi, uh, Alex Lovlam, um, and, and others that actually decided to make this um, a plan. We presented the project to Dieppe, Moncton, Fredericton, uh, the Cities Association, um, uh, the Union, uh, the FMNB, which is Francophone um, mean Association as well. And every single organization we spoke to voted in favor of this project because it just makes sense. Um, what we're telling immigrants is you have every right to Canadian citizen does, except one thing and one thing only. You cannot vote, but you can buy a house, you can pay taxes, you can work, you can send the kids to school, you can live a normal life. But once every four years, you cannot express your voice civically and engage in the political process by uh, expressing your voice at any election. And what so, was the rationale for that? Like, why did they not want permanent residents to vote? Well, let me just go back in history. In New Brunswick, um, back until the 90s, was granted permanent residents the right to vote at municipal elections. So this is something that was possible until they decided to merge the the political lists, if I'm not mistaken, the federal, provincial, and municipal ones, just to make one. What we did, actually, we just excluded a lot of residents and citizens from the political process just by making sure that, uh, it just for convenience. Um, what we're trying to do is just let's make sure that thousands of people that are considering New Brunswick home, um, that are working hard, that are contributing in any way possible, that are raising children here and getting married and studying and working and starting businesses, do also feel at home by expressing their voices at at least the local level, which is the closest to them, by expressing their voices and engaging in something that matters to them, which is at least deciding the people that will represent them at city council. So um, if you're a permanent resident right now and you show up at a civic election, what happens? Do they say, go home? That's it. Sarah, I mean, or ma'am, or whatever it is, you, you cannot vote. Um Imagine somebody who's running at city council and doing the door, the mayor or city councilor. He's going to knock or she's going to knock at every door, and she's going to get a lot of answers. Well, sorry, you seem like a nice person, and I'd like for you to engage with your platform, but I cannot express my voice because I cannot vote for you. I get the sense and, you've had this conversation with candidates that you've talked to. <laughs> well, I felt it because when I ran at city council back in 2016, I met a lot of homeowners and a lot of great citizens that have been in the country for so long that love New Brunswick as equally as any other New Brunswicker that do have a passion to be part of the growth and the prosperity of this province that would love to contribute to the political process locally, but they cannot because they haven't been given the opportunity because it doesn't matter back then, but it does today. They're as equal as any other citizen, and they're contributing to the process as with their hearts and minds and spirits, uh, and they would like to be part of the solution, which is contributing to what happens at the local level. Do you have a sense of how many permanent residents there are in New Brunswick who, who historically, you know, they haven't been able to vote? Well, it's thousands of them. The number that I was given is extremely significant. We're talking that probably it's more than ten or 20,000 people at in New Brunswick that are not expressing their voices yet. They're part of every business we can imagine. They're part of every school. They're part of every neighborhood that that is happening in New Brunswick. And what we're talking about is let us be inclusive and let us send the right signal at the national level 
Brunswick can lead this. New Brunswick can be the first province in Canada to grant permanent residents the right to vote at local levels. New York, just the state of New York, just moved in that direction just a couple of weeks ago, set an example and precedence. And if we do this, I know for a fact that we're saying New Brunswickers and Maritimers are something special because they lead with their hearts and they're extremely friendly and they're welcoming. Well, this is an extra layer for us to be able to extremely mean it, that you're leaving home and you're coming to a second home. Some people would would still say, if you want the right to vote, shouldn't you just become a citizen? Like, what could be the barriers to doing that for people? Definitely. And we're not saying that this has to go at the cost or the expense of the other. But some people will have to understand that becoming a citizen may take about five to six years. Well, the problem that we're having in New Brunswick is our retention rates. Some people will actually stand, I mean, sit in the, I mean, come to the province for about six months or 12 months for about two years and decide to leave to go to a different provinces like Montreal, Quebec, or whatever I mean, or Toronto. What we're saying is if we do a better job at creating a sense of belonging, like one of the ministers uh, talk about the sense of stickiness, if we have something special that they don't have anywhere else in Canada where this is home, they can work, they can start businesses, they can... Uh, get jobs, and they can also contribute to the political process, which is something extremely special for them. Many New Brunswickers I spoke to want to be part of the process, want to contribute, want to help, want to vote, want to run, want to be part of something bigger that Canada has given them that probably they couldn't find in their own homes. What we're saying is we might have better chances at integrating, including, and retaining most of the talents that we worked so hard to attract. And then we just let it go to another province and contribute there. I'm not one of those because every single person who leaves the province, I take it personal. I know we can do better. I know we can. We have so much potential in this province to be able to retain every talent we can. But by doing this, I know that we're putting everything in our, uh, in our power to make sure that we do retain the people that will be part of the solution here and uh, for the next little while. So what exactly does the white paper say on this? Do they give a timeline or what is the, the commitment, if, if there is a commitment? Well, I mean, I heard that if it's in the white paper, there is a good chance it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, that's the difference between the white and the green. Um, so what, I'm, what I was informed eventually is there is a good chance that the conservative government will be considering granted permanent residence the right to vote at municipal level. I mean, it is just a matter of finding out about logistics, how it can be done. But this is something that has a high, high chance of happening in the next little while. So is, would that require separating the voters list that you talked about um, that were consolidated some years ago? These are the logistics that the provincial government is looking at as we speak. I know I spoke personally to the minister, Minister Alain, uh, before this is happening. We met in Karaket. We had a constructive conversation about the benefits um, of such such a move. I know that we've been talking to every minister, other people as well, Dialogue New Brunswick, uh, uh, ASIF uh, has been leading this dialogue at local level and further to many communities. There are petitions that are every, every minister and every MLA was uh, aware of such a benefits of such a move. I know that we had a discussion about this at the Legislative Assembly and pretty much everyone is in favor of this. It's just a matter of time that this Mm. this change and historic change is about to happen in New Brunswick. So you mentioned retention. This is one good reason to do this. It helps people feel like part of the community. Um, It's more democratic, clearly. What are some other reasons why you think this needs to go ahead soon? Well, to me, like every person I speak to cannot understand the rationale of why people, a permanent resident cannot be granted the right to vote. If they are considered in the eyes of law and taxes, the exact same way as any other citizen, why every single four years the same people that are granted every single right and have every and have every single obligation cannot vote. From economic perspective, they're the same. From, from con- citizenship perspective, they're considered the same. I mean, they have the same rights and obligations. They are paying taxes. So how come somebody who's a resident who's buying a house and paying taxes at the local level cannot express his or her voice at the local level 
and neighbor can't just because they have status that is different. Citizenship to me is local. It's about what you do in your community. It's not just about what kind of passports you're holding in your hand. That's active citizenship. Those are people that I know for a fact that close to 100% of them will show up and vote and express their voices and contribute to the political process because they have so much energy. They have so much desire to be part of the prosperity of this province. And that's why they left home miles Mm. and miles away to come here for the only reason to join the political process, the economic process, and be able to do what they can to bring this country and this province to the next level. That's the only desire, not to take over, not to do anything different than just the arguments that I just presented. These people want to make a difference, and they just need a chance to do so. So where would you like to see this go next, Monsef? (laughs) Well, a vote at the Legislative Assembly, a bill, I would say, that officially grants current residents the right to vote at local level. I'd like to see it happen at the next election, and I'd like to celebrate with every single New Brunswicker something that is extremely inclusive, and a positive message to every single Canadian. If New Brunswick can do it, the rest of Canada can do it as well. Monsef Lacquist, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's Monsef Lacquist, president of the New Brunswick Multicultural Council. He's originally from Morocco and settled in New Brunswick after coming here as an international student nearly 20 years ago. Love to know your thoughts on this story or anything else that you're hearing this morning. Uh, You can always give us a call at 632-7747. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.